everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I have a really unusual um, gift box, I guess a bag as well, um, depending on how you decide to use it, um, project today. It's, um, it's evolved from a picture that I saw on Pinterest. I'll share all the details in my blog. Um, but once you start doing it, you can adapt it in like hundreds and hundreds of styles and it is just such a cool looking um, project. So what I've got, these three, so this is the one here, this is my favourite one, so after playing around. Um, I think I'm going to call it, I don't know, a drawstring explosion gift box or something like that. But basically, it, I mean it looks like a flower as well. And then you just undo, there's no um, gluing involved with this either, which is great. Um, get my finger in there. I think I've done it a bit tight just so I've got a little tag there and basically you just undo this string I find strings been better than ribbon um, and you can see that I've just put this in just to kind of give you an idea this is a 50 mil moisturizer um, but you can see the, the bottom space around that you could fill this up with sweets obviously it is a triangular shape when it's all pulled in um, but you can see there now if I pull this out because I'm gonna obviously go through all the pencil um, markings that we have to do but if I lie it down you can make out here all of the pencils and um, pencil marks and the scoring that I've done there um, now I've done this one here is got eight sides so one two three four five six seven eight this these two here so that's eight on a 12 from a 12 by 12 piece of um, paper this was eight from a piece of eight by eight paper so you can see a huge difference there um, obviously in the sizes and then these were done with four sides so where I've got here these eight triangles these two I've done with just four triangles so again I'm going to talk you all through this when I get to that stage and these are lovely again they put nice little favours in them um, I think they're really visually nice to look at. This one's more of a dumpier side so if I flip it over you can see the space that you get for this one and then exactly the same but this one here is just smaller. So that's those two and then I done that same four on a 12 by 12. So that one I showed you was eight triangles on a 12 by 12. This is four triangles on a 12 by 12 and also what I've done here rather than keeping them curved as they are here I with these ones I just squashed them folded them in so they created like that square shape and again it just gives you a whole another look and again it works exactly the same way I just undo the ribbon there and then you just pull it all out and it will reveal obviously whatever you've got inside and they are quite roomy so really really easy to do it's just down to the scoring and once you know what you're doing with your scoring then you can make so many different um, variations of it so the papers i'm using today are these here which is the Ducross paper mania capsule elements and it's the pigment um, one i uh, get 36 12 by 12 and um, they're really lovely like i said they are paper they are 160 gsm um, and they're perfect for this um, kind of project. So that's my papers. The one I'm going to use today is this green one. So I'm going to do more of a masculine um, style. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to use the brown baker's twine or the green. And then I've just also done myself just a tiny little tag there, be happy. So <clears throat> with this one here, so this is the eight sides, that I said the eight triangles. And um, obviously it's quite a big... Um, style, um, base there. What I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to make this smaller but again I'm going to talk through bit by bit as we go along. So the most important thing that you'll need for this is a compass. Now this one I have is a really crappy one, it's just one of those cheapy ones from a stationery set um, but I, since doing all of this it's made me want to get an even better one. Um, but I'm also going to be using a huge uh, dinner plate this is just one of mine that I just raided from the cupboard um, so um, again I'll show you once we get to it but that's something else that you will need as well so I'm just going to pop that over to one side there right now this is only single-sided paper which is again really good for this project especially for you guys to see what I'm doing um, if you've got double-sided um, then you'll need to Obviously make sure you can see your pencil mark, but you want to be able to rub the pencil out afterwards. So, you know, you don't want to be too heavy with it. So try and use single-sided if you, if you can, I guess. 
Okay, so first of all, what we want to do is, with our ruler, I know that this is a um, 12 by 12 piece of paper. So I'm just going to line my ruler up right at the bottom there. Oh, the focus is playing up. It doesn't seem to know what to focus on. A bit better. There we go. Right, so this is 12 inch um, side. I'm just going to grab my pencil here and just put a little marker at six inches. And I'm going to do that on all of the four sides. So all I've done there is just put a little pencil mark at, you can just see it there, just at six inches on each side. Then I want to join these opposite edges. Um, Sorry, I can't get it all in my focus here. So I'm just joining that six inch marker down to the bottom six inch marker here. So again, you need to be precise with all this. It's all a bit mathematical, this bit. So just make sure you spend time and you really get those um, pieces. So what I'm doing here, sorry, get those measurements right. What I'm doing here is can work on any square um, equal sided paper, okay? So as long as it's square, you'll be fine. Um, okay, so now you can see I've got a cross. Now what I want to do, my ruler will not stretch. When I put my paper onto the diagonal, it won't stretch from the bottom here right the way up to here. So the easiest way to do that is just now you want to go from the center point out to the corner. And if I just come down here, there we go, that's better. So I'm putting my pencil down first on that point, then lining my ruler up and then making sure it's in line with the edge. Again, I'm not pushing down too lightly so I can rub this all out and you can see there that pencil mark. It's just starting to come into the evening now so I'm getting a reflection of my camera so apologies. Um, and again, so I'm just going to pop down like that. Okay, I've just put all of my um, lights on there because it's much, much better. So you can see now what you have. So you've got your lines going across the centre at six by six and then pencil lines just going up from the centre to the corner there and you want to do that on all of those four sides. Okay once you've done that you want to grab your plate or your compass. Now the reason I'm using the plate is because as I said earlier this was a rubbish compass. It doesn't, I want to maximise this paper and I want to be able to get this right up to the it's close to the top there and you can see there I'm about an inch off so because for that reason I'm not using the compass but basically if you have your compass and it does stretch out right up to the edge there basically what you want to do is with your compass you're going to join up like so okay so I'm going to use this plate just flip it over there and basically I'm just marking getting it right up to the top there and meeting here, this pencil mark and that pencil mark, and again, just join that up like so. Again, I'll do this side, and just join like that. Okay, so I'll just bring that one up, and you can see there what I've done, that pencil mark, okay? And I'm just going to turn it around and just do again the okay. same. So that's it, we don't need the plate anymore. Um, now what we need to do is do a centre circle. Now this is how you decide how big you want your base to be. So for this one here, if I just measure, if I just measure from the middle out, so it was two, so it was four and a quarter diameter, this one. So all you do is you half that, so you put your compass at two and one eighth of an inch, like so, okay, two and one eighth of an inch, and then you'd put that into the center and draw a circle, and that will give you that size that I showed you at the beginning. Now I want to go a bit taller with this one, so I just want to take some, you know, I'm testing out all different ones. So I'm going to come in, let me just see what I've done again here. So let's do, I'm going to do a three inch um, diameter. So I need to set my compass at half, so it'll be at one and a half. So again, I'm just bringing it like so. Okay, see what I've done there. And then pop your pin in the middle 
and then just do your circle all the way around like so okay so you can just see that now once we've done that you need to do some more pencil marks so now what we're going to do is you've got all these little triangles a bit like um, Trivial Pursuit the little um, pie in the middle there so you want to go to the one of the bottom say this is the top here of each triangle the bottom corner of one here with your ruler I'm going to join it across to the other one so I'm actually making a triangle so at the moment they're triangles with a curve I want to make them so they're triangles with a straight line okay so that's that one I come around here again again put my pencil down first and line my ruler up with the other point and you can see now I've got a flat because this is what we're going to be scoring and that's what we'll create you can see here where it was a curved and then I've put this the, the pencil mark there and that's where I've scored so basically it's, it's a big template but you 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 know you obviously use it because you can't um, you can't draw around this or anything but you have to do all of this in order well this is how I've found out to do it so um, like I said these are all my measurements um, and it was purely from a picture um, that this has come about but it's it looks great um, and the picture I can't work out whether it's paper or fabric it may well be fabric so um, I'm not sure if this has been done in paper before okay so you can see there now if I just come up a bit closer can you see now everyone has a straight flat bottom and then there's that curve over the top as well okay now once you've done that piece what we need to do is add in all of our triangles so again this is going to be an eight sided one if you want to just do four so you'll see there's eight one two three four five six seven eight bigger triangles if you want to do a four sided one like this so you can see there there's, there's the four you use you ignore this line here you still have to draw it in but you ignore it and that is one big try like a funny shaped it's actually well, it's a square isn't it really if you think about it I'll bring it down a bit this is your segment so one two three four okay so what I'm going to do now is on eight but you would also do it on four so for example between this first one here of the eight I'm going to put my ruler point to point so there so there, so doing exactly the same as what we did down here, we're now doing up here, but we're not drawing a line, we're just marking the center point. So this is four and a half, so I need to, at two and a quarter there, just roughly put a little marker, okay? But what you can do is mark this at two and a quarter, just like I'm doing there, so if I mark it on there, two and a quarter, okay? And then you can just go to each part, and you'll see there that I get the same Kind of marking that one's actually better let me do that again I oh, know it's a little bit out like I said if I get a really good compass I think this will work great there we go okay and basically then put it on the other one and you kind of get like an X and marks the spot kind of thing there anyway you just want to roughly mark where that is because that's where we're going to be joining up our triangles now that's obviously on one of the eight pieces if this was on this one here all you would do is just, it's already marked, but just put a little marker there at halfway of the bigger piece. Okay, so we're using this one, but if you want to do four, you do halfway of the bigger corner. So again, I'm going to come back around here and just do, that was two and a quarter. A little pencil, another one there. See, I'm just putting a rough little marker, because this is all going to be rubbed out. So none of this is hard, it's just this is all the kind of elements you've got to put into place before we can cut and score. Once we've done that, it's really, really quick. So now I've got all these parts here. Grab my pencil and my stylus again. And now I'm going to make another triangle. So I'm going to start from the... You've got the big triangle here. And then we've done that line that we put in there to make it a flat little triangle corner of one of those you want to pop your stylus down and then you're going to mark your ruler at that little point that halfway point that we put in earlier and just score down like so and then again score down on the other side 
like so. So basically what I've just done there is just scored this triangle here, which has just been scored there. Okay, so that's what I've just scored from corner up and then that corner there up. So I'm gonna go round. What I might do is just draw pencil marks so you can see like so. So that is now what you want to score over. So if you do it in pencil first, if you're unsure, you're joining the centre of that segment, one of the eight ones, centre of it, and then join up. So we're almost creating a star shape. So again, I'm going to score. So I'm going to go around now and just score all the rest of those. Okay, so I've gone over and scored all of these triangles. So I've done them all in pencil so you can see, but I'll be rubbing them out, but they have all been scored. Okay, so just to recap, this piece here, there are eight of those. That creates eight small triangles. So that's where we marked that halfway mark and then joined from the bottom of those flat triangles. We've just joined them up there. So we've made a big star. Okay, so these are all scored now, these lines. The other bit of scoring you need to do is back to the bottom, the flat lines of those inner triangles. So again, this is gonna form this shape on the bottom. Okay, so just go around and again, make sure you're getting all your points really exact. They need to be meeting. So I'm always putting my stylus down first and then the ruler. Okay, so that is everything there. I'm just going to hold that, just freeze frames, just so you can kind of, you know, pause it if you need to. And again, just to recap, because we're done now, you should have a circle, depending on whatever size you want your base to be in the middle. You should then have straight lines within that circle. You should have one big circle. Then you should have your line down through the middle. Then within that big circle, you should have eight segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or four, which would be that big corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. And then I've created these smaller triangles within that. Okay, so that's all the elements you should have. Now what we want to do is cut this out. So really neatly, you're going to go around and just cut the big circle that's all we're cutting. Okay, so there's my big circle. Now make sure you spend time on that because this is all what you see. This is all of these lines here. This is the, the outer part of the, the circle. Okay, now we need to do some burnishing. So the easiest way I find to do this is grab your ruler and first of all, you just want to push up against those straight lines within the middle. So you can see there, all I'm doing is just going around and just burnishing that score line. We can do these easier and put more pressure on them once it all comes together. So again, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so that's that. Now the next bit is you want to fold down on each of these. So you can see there what I'm doing. You don't want to fold this or anything. You need to keep that nice and curved because that's what's going to create ultimately the, the, the look of the, um, uh, the bag. So you can see there I'm just scoring again just folding down and just pinching you get a nice join at the bottom there so just go around and do that on all of those triangular scores. that's now all burnished you can see everything there now we need to grab a hole punch okay and what we're going to do is bring up this is where we now start creating our shape. So if you see, if I turn that over, can you see the triangle in the middle here? And then you've got these curved bits. What you want to do is grab one triangle like I have, find the other triangle next to it and bring it up so that the tops of the two triangles, and we'll just grab that one. I'm going to burnish that one too well. So this is what I mean now. You can re-burnish. Oh, where's that one? Needs to be done better. There we go. 
if you go over the other way you can grab your bone tool and just go along at the bottoms there because you need to make sure that they really do fold up so I'm just going to go around there and just turn it over because it's easier once you've burnished the longer lines that's why I didn't do it at the beginning Okay, so start again. So bring up one of the triangles like so, make sure the two lines are burnished. Then bring your other triangle over. So again, just making sure it's all nice and burnished along the bottom there. You're basically pinching together so you get this shape here. So I've got a triangle there, I've got a triangle there, and then I've got this arched piece here. Okay, so once you you know what you're doing with that piece, what you want to do is grab your bone tool, turn this over and just curve from triangle to triangle, just the edge there. And you want to just do it kind of like a, a you know, an, a, an angle, so you're kind of following the curve. You can see now that they're all starting to lift up. Again, I can just pinch in the two tops of the triangles are there and then I've got this nice arched piece and there's a triangle there then grab the next one once you've done this once and it's in its shape it will stay so now you can see I'm just bringing around that other one and just make sure that you get it all nice and pinched at the bottom so it's that one okay so I've just brought all mine in for the minute and you can see the shape now we're getting on the bottom there okay but just keep bringing it up once we tie it with the drawstring, but you can see now it's all starting to come into place. So what you want to do next is each curved piece, bring it together, make sure you line up the tops there of the opposite one. Grab your hole punch and just pop it in about, I'd say, half an inch down, just along the score line there. So you can see I've got the triangle here, okay, and then I'm just to the right hand, the left hand side of that. You can see there how close I've come. So there's the triangle, about half an inch down. Just pop a hole in there. Grab the next two again. Make sure they're all lined up like so. And again, just use your other one that you've done as a guide and just line them up there. Then round to the next one. Make sure it's all lined up. If it's a little bit out, don't worry. It's not going to really affect it because it's a drawstring, so it will all still come together. Again, just go around, just make sure that you've got your points are all in place there. Let's pinch that a little bit. So I'm folding triangle to triangle, okay? And then you should know that you get it nice and lined up. Just using the opposite one as a gauge. And you can see you should have two hole punched. Um, circles at the top of every triangle. Okay, so done, didn't do the right one there. You can see now, so that's again on the 12 by 12, same as this one, but this one has a bigger base and this one has a smaller base, but it's taller, so it means you could put something in obviously a bit taller. So now grab your string. I'm just going to grab the green for now and just cut off um, what have I got here. It's over 22 inches, so it's just enough because you need to start bringing it all together. So if you want, put in what you've got now. Obviously rub out all of your pencil marks. And then you want to go just in, pick any one, and then out the other one. So you're kind of going up and over. Once you get kind of halfway round, we'll start pulling it together. Just so you don't use tons and tons of um, string or ribbon. Like I said, I find a string or a thin ribbon is better for this. So now I'm going to grab two ends of this and start pulling it together, like so. You see now? And then if it's not, just you need to just kind of work around just those score lines, just making sure that it all sits together. And again, then you want to go continue, so up and over. And like I said, once you've pulled them all in and you've worked with it a little bit, it does make it really easy and it will just kind of stay in its shape. So again, and then the last one that you have, so put that one in there, 
you want the two pieces to go out. So one like so, and that one, because that creates the start of your drawstring. And then that one, just pop in. Oh. See there I've gone, I've done that wrong. Let me just go around and finish that one properly. I should have gone in and I don't know what I've done there. Obviously missed that because my hand was in the way. There we go. Can you see already now it's staying more in its shape? So it's just, it's a tricky one to burnish initially. I think that's the thing. But once you get it there, it's it's really, really good. Actually, this string will now stretch. So there we go. So that's all in place. This would also work as a nice like bowl for a party. You'd obviously line it, or depending on what you're putting in it. But if you just were to tie it there, for example, it makes quite a nice little display. Or for storage for your craft room if you use a stronger card. So now when I pull that all together, I'll put a loose knot in it first of all. Like so. It's just got such a pretty shape. I really do like this. And then I'm going to grab my tag. It kind of stays there as well. See, so I'm not actually that knot's holding it all nicely. I'm just going to thread this one through. And I want it to sit on the top like so. So I'm going to tie another knot just there and then a nice little bow. Or you could just finish it. You could hang other bits on it. You could do a bigger tag if you want to, but I quite like that one there. And then just go around and just make sure, just with your, your nail, if you've got them, but just really pinch the bottom bits here, just to make sure you've got a nice finish, because you want your base to be a nice flush shape there and okay nice so there you have it so like yeah. I said that's they're both with 12 by 12s but if I put them on their sides you can see the difference and if I turn them upside down again you can see the difference there these are both all three are done with eight by eight again you get a completely different size and style depending on whether you do eight or four I will share all the templates in my blog so I will take photos of all of these lied out with all of the, um, and I will go over the templates here that I have in black pen so you can really see them. And then that was the bigger 12 by 12 with the four. So like I said, there are endless, you could do so many different things with this, but I, these are my favorites, the 12 by 12s. And um, I think they're great, really nice, um, different looking gift idea. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this one today. I hope I explained it as best I can. A little bit different that one with all the maths and all the scoring. Um, but we got there. Please hit the like button if you did enjoy today's tutorial and remember to subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.